Hello and welcome to the first Welsh Sport Insider of 2020. In this episode, we're going to be taking you through three different sports that you can take up this year. First up, we've got Mika Moore, who's over in Thangranog, trying a hand at a bit of skiing. And then we've got Shona Davith in Cardiff, having a go at a bit of table tennis at the Cardiff Table Tennis Club. As for me, I'm here in Bisham Abbey with the Team GB hockey team to meet a very special guest. I'm Leah Wilkinson, GB and Welsh hockey defender, and I think you should try hockey in 2020 because it's fast and furious. Well, hello Leah, I'm here with you. Thank you very much for inviting me to training. I can't wait to check out what it takes to become an elite hockey player. Uh, but first of all, I need to learn the basics. So what are the basics involved with playing hockey? I've got a stick here in front of me. Yeah. Um, just, just take me through how I hold it to start off with. Okay, so left hand at the top. Okay. Yeah, perfect, that's a good start. You know your left, Great start. I assume okay. that's the winner. Right hand here. Okay. So the only time that your right hand will really come to the top is when you hit, so we'll try that out later. You cannot use this side of the stick. Okay. They're the fundamentals of it. Mm, okay. So, hitting. Okay. So this is the one time I said, what happens with your grip? Comes to the top. Perfect. Comes to the top. Okay. I was listening. Good. <laughs> and your swing is like, kind of like two sports. Right. Okay. Do you want to guess what they are? Golf. And, yeah, golf, good. And hockey? <laughs> this is what the kids say to me. Right, okay. <laughs> Imagine we swing a bit more round our body, so. I'm a little bit like baseball, is it? Perfect. You see, that wasn't so bad. Not so bad. Okay, at all. okay. so hands are together. <laughs> okay, ball is in line with your front foot. Yeah. So your left foot. All you're going to do is swing round and keep your head down. Okay. So if you keep your if your head comes up, what you're going to do? You're going to miss it. I shouldn't have told you that tip because I I, <laughs> I I want to see you miss a little bit. Okay. Okay. So it's head down there, swing through, and hit. Okay. Wow. Okay. You've got this. Right. Right. So you're going to have to show me it. So. Obviously to the top. Yeah. Swing round your body. Keep your head down. Swing round. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> Hockey in Wales is quite a big sport already and I'm sure there's a lot, lots of clubs as well. Yeah, absolutely. You know, there's loads of clubs in, in Wales and you can easily contact Hockey Wales, look online and find your local clubs, which is the best way. So if anybody wants to get involved in hockey, you literally, like I say, contact Hockey, hockey Wales, look online, and you just find your local club and go along and, and try it. And I think that's the most important thing, is it's not about kind of what level you, you play at. It's not about always having to play at the top. It's about getting involved and participation and getting involved in this amazing sport, which you hopefully will start to do. Maybe in 40 years, I'll be representing the over 65s, maybe. But um, <laughs> thank you very much. I'm going to let you go back to your training session now. Uh, we are going to go check out Mika's sport for 2020. She is skiing in Thangranog. Who best to do some skiing than a Winter Olympian? If you went to school here in Wales, then you'll be well aware of the Earth Centre in Thangranog. But did you know that at this facility there's the opportunity to get involved in snow sports, including skiing and snowboarding? So my ambition for 2020 is to start a new sport and tonight I'm going to give snowboarding a try. So let's meet the team before we get out on the slopes. Hi Chris. You're right. I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Now you're the manager at the facility here and you can see how busy the slopes are mm -hmm. tonight. How does that make you feel? It makes us feel very proud actually. Um, it's lovely to see old faces who have always used the centre or facility, but also new faces from the local area are coming up now on a regular basis. From a national survey from a couple of years ago, there's a, around 215,000 who are looking to get into snow sports who haven't yet experienced it. It's very affordable actually, you can really get into the, into the sport through group lessons, junior ski school, private one-to-ones. If they enjoy, I suppose that's the first kind of stepping stone into, into their snow sports career, if you like. So 
you had funding here to extend the slope, so what did that look like? We heard that Sport Wales uh, development scheme had a grant um, going. We went for the grant and we got it, which enabled us, enabled us then to extend the slope, do all the profiling, you know, the groundwork, drainage, matting, etc, etc. So I suppose it was the first kind of stepping stone into getting the project completed. Well, it's incredible here and the National Lottery and Sport Wales have helped set up this incredible facility and I'm super excited to get out there and try it. Spin your body, and you do it with me. Okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. Not quite. Almost made it round. It's good 90 degrees. <laughs> So you show me the basics and I think I'm getting the hang of it. I'm sweating, so that's a good sign. Why is skiing and snowboarding so good for, for fitness? Um, I think because you're having fun at the same time while you're doing it, so you don't realise how much hard work it is. Yeah, you're getting a decent workout, especially on your legs. So you mentioned the fun aspect there and I'm really enjoying it. And I know a lot of children from around Wales and schools around Wales come down and enjoy the facilities too. So what do you think it is that they like about it? Um, I think they like it here because we can offer something that not every sort of outdoor centre can, can offer the kids. Um, yeah, they, we also get kids from sort of slightly less well-off areas. So it gives them a chance to give it a go. Um, so yeah, it's quite cool to get, offer it to, to sort of kids, especially from all around Wales. Ollie, so I've seen you've been doing some crazy tricks up there. I've had a go tonight. I can't do those tricks yet, but how did you get to that level? Do it for a long, long time. I've been doing it for about 20 years, I think. So, <laughs> yeah, since I was a little nipper. <laughs> it's easier when you're small as well. And what do you love about having this facility here? Oh, it's great. The, um, the jump is like one of the best about. It's so, so good, especially when it's raining like this. It's yeah. excellent. Do you get to come down here often? Once or twice a week. Roughly, we live about an hour away, so it's not too bad. Well, that is it for the Slopes of Langranog. If you think snow sport is for you, then check out the venue on the website and make sure you follow Sport Wales on social media. See you soon. You've just become a full-time athlete for GB. Um, how have you kind of gone about? doing that and how do you how does it feel to represent GB? Well I think the last kind of four or five months since I kind of was around the GB program and training with them uh, I've been teaching and playing hockey so it's kind of been quite manic days perhaps like teaching some lessons in the morning then training in the afternoon etc and from last week so from the start of January my work gave me a sabbatical until next September so I've been able to uh, train uh, full time and just kind of not worry about lesson planning or what homework I'm going to set or anything like that. The Olympics obviously coming up, what would it mean to you to kind of make that team? I think, you know, the idea of it kind of makes me smile and kind of makes me a little bit nervous just that, you know, the fact that I'm kind of got the opportunity now which potentially I didn't think I would you know I had my first kind of trial and and taste the GB when I was uh, what in 2010 so it's taken me almost a decade and two or three trials later to uh, have the opportunity to actually play with uh, getting my first cap uh, last year so I definitely never ex expected it. I always hoped and it was always an ambition and a dream for me um, and it was kind of that cherry on top to you know having a, a pretty successful Welsh hockey career so for me I'm just feel incredibly lucky uh, but I wasn't that kind of when's the, when's the time coming you know it was just uh, worked hard enough stayed fit and I've got my opportunity. Well you say that you've represented Wales I mean you are the most capped sports person in Welsh history um, you know, what an achievement that is. Yeah, no, it, it just kind of came around, you know. I, I, I love playing for Wales and the, the passion of the nation and representing, uh, you know, the Dragon and everything, you know, everything linked to playing for Wales has been brilliant. And I, I, because I've enjoyed it so much, I've just kind of kept playing and playing. Uh, so, you know, from my first cap in 2004, 
and then to get that uh, kind of record last year, I feel very, very lucky. Giving any sport a go is important, but I would definitely put my vote towards hockey and kind of push you to play in hockey, just so you can, you know, go and have a go at hitting balls really hard and running around. I mean, my yeah, I mean, my running around maybe needs a little bit of work technique with the dribbling. My shooting's all right though, and uh, yeah, definitely something that I'd, I'd, I want to take up for sure. We are now going to be checking out the Team GB meeting, uh, so we can find out all about your secrets and your tactics. Is that right? Mm. Maybe not. No, I think they're top secret. Top and secret. Maybe you'll you'll see those later on in the year. Okay. Maybe we'll save them for the Olympics. Now I think it's time for us to throw to Shona David, who is at the Cardiff Table Tennis Club. Welcome to Cardiff Table Tennis Club. Now, I'm not really one for being outside during the winter, so I've come here today to try out what I think could be my new sport for 2020. It's just a really, really fun sport. Anybody can do it. It's an escape from, you know, everything else. It's great atmosphere, a lot of friendly people, and there's always someone to train with. Everyone's, like, really kind and welcoming and support you. Well, it's great fun, you like meet uh, really nice people, you can make friends and then I'm quite competitive so I just really enjoy playing people. I mean, I love to come down, socialise, meet some new friends and stay fit and healthy and get off the Xbox now and again. Table tennis will make you to laugh. <laughs> it's a more fun sport. Now, I've never played table tennis before, Lloyd, so do you think okay. you can teach me some, uh, some of the basics? Definitely, okay. With the grip, you want to hold it right at the top of the handle mm -hmm. because if you're at the top of the handle, you get a little bit more control of the racket head. Okay. okay. Try and rest that finger along the back, just like that. Well done already. And uh, the thumb goes across the front on that little ledge there. That's perfect. Backhand, side step, forehand. Forehand, side step, forehand. Side step, forehand. Right, we're ready to go, I think. Okay. Well done. You. Can you tell us a little bit about how the club got started and how you've grown the club? You've got 16 tables down there and you've got very large numbers that turn up every week. Okay, well the club was started by Nathan Thomas about seven years ago and he wanted to create a dedicated table tennis facility in Wales that was accessible for anyone, any age, any ability, any disability. It's really important that we're an inclusive club and that we run sessions for anyone to get involved in whatever level you want to play at whatever age you are and as I said whatever ability or disability it's really important that you can access this club and have a go and have fun as well. They do say it's changed their lives much for the better. And what do you think other clubs can learn? How do they suppose follow the success that you guys have had here? I think it is about having that kind of the vision of what you want to achieve for a club but also it is about keeping, keeping your eyes on the ball of being inclusive, about saying, about working really hard to make sure that anyone who walks through the door can have a game of table tennis, can progress in their skills, can learn things, can make new friends, and can enjoy themselves. And then I've noticed there's a brilliant mix of girls and boys that come to the club. Yeah, yeah. The, table tennis, we're always trying to encourage girls to do the sport. Um, we want as many girls to come and try the sport as possible. And um, Girls I think find it easier sometimes if they have a female coach and we're very lucky to have a, a junior female coach working with us here. Well Emma it's brilliant seeing the work that you guys do here at Cardiff Table Tennis Club and now we can go and meet one of those fantastic female coaches and earlier I caught up with Lauren. Well, Lauren, it's great to meet you. Now, how did you get involved with this club in the first place? Well, I um, I played here from the age of about 12, and um, I heard that there was a level one coaching course that I was going to be started, so I asked the owner uh, about it, and he introduced me to coaching. Now, if I'm looking to play table tennis in 2020, what's the one big tip that you give me? Just have fun. It's a sport for fun. Some people like um, want to get into it and train hard, some of the people just like to have fun and I think 
the basics of it is just enjoy it because it should be enjoyed, it's a good sport. Well, I'm completely sold on table tennis. It's fast, it's skillful, and most importantly, it's a lot of fun. Now, I don't think Lloyd is gonna let me finish training early, so I better get back to it. I'll see you soon. Fantastic stuff there. Great to see so many people getting involved in a new sport at a new club as well. As you can currently see, Leah is behind me involved in an inter-squad match. Of course, the pressure is really on for these girls as they look to be the one on that plane to Tokyo later on this year. Best of luck to her, let's see how she gets on. Leah, we've just seen you here playing in a very wet, windy, tough competition. How do you feel it went for you? No, it was a really good game, really competitive. Um, it's really important to play in squad matches because it gets us kind of riled up and it gets us to play with the players around us so then we get used to it. And then, of course, looking forward, we've got Tokyo. You've got a lot of places here. People want to be in that squad. When do you, when do you find out? Yeah, there's a, it's really, really competitive. You know, there's a, a, a lot more of us than kind of spots on the plane. Um, it's quite late selection. We find out uh, kind of first or second week in June, uh, which makes it very, very competitive all the way until that date. The whole of Wales will be cheering you on. I'll be cheering you on as well. I may not make the flight to Tokyo, but I definitely will be checking out one of the local hockey clubs when I get back home. That's it for this, uh, this episode of Welsh Sports Insider. We will be seeing you very soon.